Hi guys and welcome to another edition of the Kevin Moore Show. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined by my guest, Kerry Cohan. Now Kerry is an international best-selling author, a gifted soul coach, psychic and a national child advocate. Now when she was 27, she died twice and this is the basis of her first book, The Five Lessons in Life. She is now coaching clients on how to not only excel in all aspects of their lives, but she is also showing them how to help humanity and the universe as a whole. Kerry Cahan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm looking forward to this. Well, th- yeah. Oh, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. It's taken us a while to get to this point right now because you're traveling a lot. I've been uh, getting married and traveling as well. Um, we've known each other on and off by phone now for uh, you know many, many, many months. And I wanted to put your wonderful book on my show, which is The Five Lessons of Life. And there's much, much more to this book than that. There's a near-death experience here. There's so much more, which we're going to get into as well. And, uh, of course, you're in lovely Norway right now. Now, currently, you live in uh, Portugal. Is that where you're based right now? I do. I have a retreat center in Portugal. We have property in the UK. And I am in lovely Norway right now with a girlfriend. We're actually looking at bringing retreats here as well. And this property. So, yeah, very fortunate. That's very yeah well you say very fortunate but you've created this life which Absolutely. we'll get into in this interview as well so but but i know you are appreciative you you know you're you're definitely appreciative what some of the practices that you do per day in a sense that sort of would be your spiritual practices if you do do any uh, well i guess i meditate every morning but throughout the day i meditate as well for instance today we it's pouring rain here but we went out into the ocean and i was floating in the water just you know, ah, oh. <laughs> and the rain was coming down on my face. And I had a beautiful moment there where I actually went through the rain and I saw the light and welcomed the light in and I heard a song and uh, just connecting with spirit. So I tend to do that on a daily basis. You know, we, we go out into the ocean every single day. There isn't a day that doesn't go by without uh, stepping into the ocean. Hmm. <laughs> That is so special. And uh, your retreat center uh, in Portugal, what's the uh, website for that as well? Villaheaven.co.co. And uh, it's it's five villas that we have there. We're actually building a, a you know, congregation uh, area that you can use for facilities. And I've been teaching Freedom Na- Masters now for, oh gosh, I'd say about 10 years. Um, but I've been doing workshops ever since I, I died uh, at the age of 27. And so Free Masters has grown. We were doing them almost monthly in Canada. And then it just grew and grew and grew. And now we have our own retreat center in Portugal. So that's amazing. Yeah. And, and is there a website for that as well for Freedom Masters? Everything can be found on my website, which is kerrycohan.com. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, well, we will be uh, listing uh, both those websites um, on this show on the lower third as well. So they will be coming up. So um, this is uh, such a uh, it's a special time for you as well, because I know that you're getting married. Soon. Yes. Um, at Treat yeah. Center. Congratulations. Yes. We have people coming from all around the world. They're uh, they're congregating. We've got mystics and seers and musicians and singers and it is going to be a celebration i i'm really looking forward to it mm. that's beautiful that's beautiful now obviously uh, prior to the near-death experience which we'll just get into um you was always sort of a a, per, a younger person that that knew that yeah. there was more to this than just we were more than our bodies you knew that and you, well did you know that or did you just think that there was something more to this reality oh no i've known it since i was a little girl i i started having out of body experiences at the age of 3 and uh you know my mom would tuck me in she'd walk down the stairs and i could actually lift out of my body and watch her go down the stairs and fly above her and you know it was our family secret we didn't talk about it much because back in the 60s 70s 80s and even into the 90s 
gosh, even into the 2000s, it wasn't mm, as accepted as it is now. But with shows like Manifest that's now out on NBC, I, I got a phone call two days ago about that TV show. And it was really interesting because it is everything that I've experienced that they've created a um, story around, you know, from the near-death experience, coming back and hearing things, being able to solve cases. I've worked on three, you know, missing person cases, actually four. And um, and you know, the, the the trumpeting in the sky was uh, the next epi- episode. We've certainly heard that. Uh, and I'm not unique. I mean, how many people around the planet have had these experiences and more? So... Well, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, but each person's experience is unique. So let's go to 27 years old and what actually led up to that near death experience and what was some of that experience, obviously, without giving too much of the book away. Right. Well, it started for me. I I was uh, (laughs) I had an abortion when I was 24 years old and it just about killed me. Um, In fact, literally, it just about killed me. And, you know, I was so so um, full of guilt and self-loathing that I started to drink. I started to try and basically, it was like voluntary suicide, you know, slow death uh, uh, by alcohol. And, um, you know, that went on for about three years. And then one day I just got a bit too inebriated and I choked on my own vomit. And I died in my little suite in Vancouver, downtown Vancouver. And um, and I saw a very dark side. I was surprised because I thought, you know what, I'm a good person. I've been volunteering since the age of 13. I've, you know, I didn't have a boyfriend until I was 20. You know, I was uh, really everything my mom wanted in a daughter. I think I was that person. And uh, and so I was really surprised that on the other side, I thought, gosh, I'm going to, you know, see the light. But it wasn't. There was really dark entities there waiting for me. And so the lesson out of that was that self-loathing and negative dialogue and, you know, uh, negative thoughts can actually stop the light from coming in and from you walking in the light. So I had to come back and reassess who am I? How do I think? What thought process do I have on a regular basis? And even today, I mean, it's 27 years later, and it's still a muscle. It's still something that I work on on a regular basis of, you know, um, correcting myself. For instance, we had a lot of challenges getting this interview together. It was like one after another. And I was talking about that with the girlfriend. She went, hey, 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 you know, come on. Let's stop talking about the obstacles. Let's talk about it actually happening. And, And as soon as we did, here we are. So, yeah. Here we are. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, in that near-death experience, uh, how did you wake up from that? I mean, what uh, what state were you in? Obviously, you're choking on your yeah. vomit. You're having this near-death experience. I mean, what, who saved you? What what saved you? Well, you know, up until that point, I was pretty much an atheist. Uh, I, I was scared to believe in God because I was brought up that God was vengeful. You know, I was brought up in a traditional church that uh, taught to be, you know, we were taught to be scared of, of uh, creator. And so I, I didn't want to have anyone judging me at that point, um, because I was doing a good job of it myself. So when that happened, and when I came face to face with a really dark side, what some people would call the devil, um, I, it, it was the devil, it was Satan. And, you know, I thought, okay, so if the devil is in front of me, We're in a world of contrast, up, down, in, out, left, right. There has to be a good side to this dark side, right? So I had to, I I intuitively knew what to do. I I was facing toe-to-toe with a very dark entity, and I don't even like saying his name. It's almost like he who shall remain nameless, right, you know? And uh, and so I, I intuitively just the military training in me uh, came in and I stood to attention. I, I um, literally decided to call in my own army and I called in God and Jesus to be by my side. And uh, lo and behold, they showed up. And, you know, this is really uh, an interesting thing for me to, to speak about publicly because 
in our family, you didn't talk about, you know, God or Jesus or any uh, anything like that. You know, you could talk about maybe grandfather spirit because of the native belief system. But um, my mom being brought up in, you know, um, in residential schools and stuff like that, um, you know, uh, God was a pretty, pretty dark thing as well and uh, a dark experience. But what I came to realize was, uh, no, creator is much more than that. And in fact, when I met with God during my second death, well, well fast forward a little bit, I died again a year later of a heart attack. And, uh, and I, you know, heart disease runs in the family. I, I've come to understand that it's not hereditary. It's the thought process that's hereditary, right? The disease isn't. It was the thought process. So when I died the second time, I met with Creator and I asked him, what do I call you? And I loved his answer. He, um, he said, um, it matters less the name you call me as long as you call my name. And it was at that point I realized, yeah, there is no judgment here. It's pure love, pure light, pure, you know, essence. And uh, and so then the lessons began. And then the lessons began, which we're going to get into as well. But again, going back to that first near-death yes. experience, do you, do you think that hellish experience that you were surrounded by to begin with, do you think or do you feel that, again, you created that experience, not just from your actions of what you were doing with self-loathing towards yourself, mm -hmm. but also that that's the level that you felt that you were at oh, when you crossed over? Absolutely. I was not in the mindset of loving anything, especially myself. So, you know, I had gremlins. I was really hesitant to put that part of, you know, my experience in the book because I really wanted to focus on the five lessons and and the thoughts, you know, the power of thought. But I also realized in all, you know, all the years of working with um, with clients that many, many people have experienced the dark side as well. And so I decided to talk about those little gremlins that would come out of the floorboards and, and you know, um, claw at me. And that went on for months before I died. Uh, it was foreshadowing. It was a, a warning that I had to smarten up quick because if I didn't, um, I was going to, you know, experience what I did. So those little, uh, you know, what it reminded me of was the movie. Um, oh gosh, ah, Unchained Melody, Ghost. You know, the movie Ghost, where you know the graphics and. The movie probably weren't the best, but those little guys that came out, the growling noise, that noise of them going, that's, that's exactly what I heard. So when I watched the movie the first time, I remember thinking, oh my goodness, someone else has seen this. And then I had the same experience with Matrix. I had, you know, so many movies have spoken and, and it's exactly what we experience. Well, yeah, but you think, where do those movies come from? They, you know, that's coming from a deeper level, uh, that information, and it's coming through, you know, to the people that are receiving that. They're channeling that information through, yeah. not even knowing that they're channeling it through or bringing it through, but, you know, they are. I think some know that they're channeling it and bringing it through. You know, it's a deliberate in many ways. Uh, there is no accident that all of this, it's universal, universal information, right? Universal knowledge. And it's coming at the exact time for the masses to be able to wake up to the next level. It's almost like a computer game where you go from one level to the next, to the next, to the next. And that is our spiritual awakening here, is that we are in what would feel like a computer-generated program, and we are growing spiritually. And that's our whole purpose here, I believe, is to, you know, what I learned, well, maybe I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> Yeah, what I learned in, uh, I met with the Council of Men, and I had never heard of the Council of Men, right? But um, what I, I learned from them was that, you know, um, Earth is like, let's do Earth, you know, it's like the ultimate challenge. It is, um, well, there are many places that you can choose from. Earth is just one of many. But when you come to Earth, it's unique because of the, you know, the uh, ability of free will. So when you come here, you can either grow your spirit 
more than can be measured, you know, it, it can be, you know, infinite, or you can just, dis- well, destroy it was my word, they, they said, no, you know, energy cannot be destroyed, it can only be transformed or transmuted. So, um, you can't destroy your spirit, but you can come return back worse off once you came. Yeah, that was their terms, you know, their, their words, is that you can return off worse off than whence you came. And uh, and that's where I was heading during the first death. I was going to return off worse than when I first arrived here. And so I was, um, I was told that they were having counsel on me. And sure enough, I ended up meeting up with that counsel. And they confirmed that, yes, they were very concerned of the direction I was going into because I had, you know, things that I needed to do here and a mission uh, to do. And that, to me, was laughable because I was a drunk. I was a bartender at Richards on Richards, which was a huge nightclub in Vancouver. And, uh, and you know, I was an alcoholic. And I never thought that I would end up doing what I ended up doing. And that was, yeah, becoming a national child. Yeah, and changing 14 laws, or writing 14 laws, so... Okay, and that was, uh, what program is it? That's a Canadian program for children, is it? Um, Well, actually, uh, the 14 laws that I either wrote or amended were across Canada. And, uh, for instance, I brought in um, a lot of American laws, actually. Amber Alert brought that into Canada with Heather Forsyth. Uh, She was a a politician in Canada. And, um, oh, the Child Internet uh, Protection Act, the uh, Sex Offender Registry, raise the age of consent from 14 to 16. So these were all laws that in 1998, I was the first one in Canada to actually speak up and say that, you know, we've got to do something, we've got to amend the laws here. And it was after a close call with our own daughter, she was two at the time, and um, a three-time convicted pedophile entered our house and tried to get her. And so I chased him out. And he was over six feet tall. I'm under five feet tall, but I just happened to be cutting a salad. And I had a huge knife in my hand. And I heard the floorboard creak behind me. And I thought, oh, my goodness, what the hell is that? And I turned around and he was in the kitchen heading towards the nursery where our youngest or our oldest at the time was sleeping. So I chased him. Was, yeah, was he caught? Did, he, did they catch him? Well, because he didn't do anything. You know, he was in the house and he was saying he was just trying to be neighborly and introduce himself. So so uh, we couldn't charge him at that point. But I did. I was persistent and I got him on a historical case about uh, three and a half years later, four years later. So it took time, but we got him. And in the meantime, I worked with 3,500, um, you know, people that had experienced child sexual abuse or their kids had. And at that time, there was no, you know, um, no agencies for people to go to to report this. So, no, I think Child Find was about the only one around. So, so it was a pretty heavy go at the beginning, and I had a lot of death threats. I had a lot of um, pedophiles that were not very happy that I was speaking out. There was a pedophile liberation party here in Europe that was after me uh, with all kinds of threats. So it was interesting times. That's absolutely incredible that you did that. And just and it just goes to show that you don't need to be sat there meditating, you know, in the white robes, playing playing the you know, the, the, <laughs> the music bowls and that you can actually do something spiritual with your life that's actually uh, being of service to anyone and, and you were of service to all those children that you've never know that you've helped yeah. but you have changed their lives from what you did. Well, every yeah, time I would wonderful. hear an Amber Alert, I'd, I'd actually well up in tears because it took years. It took us, you know, at least two, two and a half years to go through all of the hoops, you know, the regulations, the police department, the media, everything to be able to get that. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. it did. I can I can't I can't imagine and and again you wouldn't have felt that your life would have gone down that direction after your last near near death experience, well, but um yeah so but going back to that near 
Go yeah. ahead. No, go I was ahead. just going to add one thing to that, though. When I was in heaven, um, you know, Creator kept saying, you've got to go back. you got too much to do. And I was like, what the hell am I going to do? You know, I didn't say hell. I said, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I'm an alcoholic, blah, blah, blah. And they said, you've got to go back. You've got too much to do. You've got so much to do. And so uh, I was illiterate, right? I could not read. I was in the dummy class in grade eight. I failed grade 12. I, I was basically, you know, uh, I could not read. And yet here I amended more laws in Canada than any other Canadian citizen to date and probably any other citizen in the planet. It actually, I don't know of anyone that has amended and written fourteen laws, and it was all spirit driven and given. I would, I would wake up knowing, okay, this is what I have to do today, and it, it was just downloaded. And I would phone and make the right connections, and people would just show up, and it was magical the way it all came to pass. Truly, hmm. that is absolutely amazing. And, uh, you know, what an inspiration that, that is to so many other people watching this as well. Um, I think just going back to your um, your last near-death experience, and, and again, what age were you at the last one? 28. You were... 28, just... 20, oh, wow, they were, they were really close together. Okay, um, 28 years old, and this was the only way to really shake you up, to get you out of the, uh, the present situation that you found yourself in as well. And this one was a bit more, a bit more loving. And I'm guessing, was this the one where you met the encounter with the, uh, the Council of it Men? It is, yes. Yes, it was, yes. I thought you said that, yes. And, and uh, are, are these, would you say, your spirit guide team? Is, is this your go-to team? No. Um, I've had different spirit, his spirit guides over the years. I had uh, Catherine was my main spirit guide for many, many years. Um, she, she was the one that actually was with me during uh, the, the second death and then going into my relationship and my marriage. Um, she helped me with a lot of the advocacy work then Hector came and Hector was the one that um, was really my my advocacy warrior guy <laughs> and and we were together for a long time right now I I don't actually have one per se I I connect with Alcazar who I channel uh, Lazarus is also with me he's like a warrior that works with me he's of the lizard uh, family but he's really beautiful he's really lovely um, I know this probably sounds, uh, you know, crazy to some, but it's, it's my reality and it's, uh, it worked very well. So I channel Alcazar, um, for, you know, during workshops, working with individuals and it's pure love. He works with the interplanetary galactic council and, uh, and it's pure light. It's lovely. Well, I, I, I do hope our paths cross one day in person mm -hmm. with a bunch of cameras and audio equipment and we get to speak to you and Alcazar uh, for the channeling docu-series that we're working on, which is just about to start being released. We are edit that's being edited right now, that docu-series is. Oh. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to get you on that. Um, so, <laughs> wow, so much to speak about. So going back to um, your your last near-death experience as well. You know, when you came out of that and having uh, two sort of near-death experiences so close to each other, mm -hmm. was there a bit of the, a thing called, you know, survivor, um, um, survivor kind of um, issues coming back from those near-death experiences where you knew the truth of reality? You had touched... Gone, you'd gone back home to where you'd come from. Was it difficult to readjust? And, you know, how difficult was it to give up the, the alcohol? And I mean, was it a process over many years? That's what I, I guess what I'm saying. Um, the first death, it was instant, not going back to the alcohol at all. Uh, I was scared straight, <laughs> literally. You know, when you come toe to toe with the, such a, you know, the devil, uh, I, I, created an association, you know, devil and alcohol went hand in hand. And in fact, the more I look at alcohol, the more I realize it, there's no accident that we call it spirits, right? That uh, it's some, some pretty dark energy sometimes, and, or all times, 
actually. So I did drink again for a while. I, I you know, alcohol was kind of a, a wave for me. And when I'd go really, really high, but during the divorce, I went really, really low again. And, you know, I'm human. I'm like everyone else. We're spiritual beings having that human experience. So, so yeah, I've had highs and lows throughout my life. Um, but after the first death, no, I didn't go back to alcohol at all for a very, very long time. Uh, the second death was more confirmation. It was more um, letting me know that, listen, you really need to start loving yourself. Love thyself, love thyself, love thyself is all I kept hearing. You know, I'd wake up and 2.22 in the morning or 3.13 or whatever it was. And and I would have my journal and, you know, okay, what do you want to tell me? And it would be love thyself, love thyself, love thyself. That's all. And those words are pretty powerful, right? And, uh, and so I had to actually start to practice that and, and integrate it into, into the system. Mm. And I guess that's an ongoing process or, you know, it's, I mean, how it, it's difficult, isn't it? You know, this, this, this loving ourselves, it's not always so easy. Yeah. Well, I used to say that, you know, it used to be difficult for me. Now I say, I'm so happy and grateful now that it's easy for me. I, I truly do love myself and look at what I'm able to manifest now that I do love myself because everything else just melts away. All those barriers, all the heart walls, you know, the stuff that you put up, yeah, it all melts away. Once you start loving yourself, everything else just flows and things just start to come to you. And, you know, and now look at, yeah. Life. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you know, mm -hmm. when you were in Canada, obviously um, after the near-death experience, you know, you, you'd had your, where well, you're having your children, you was in your, well, I want to say it's your first marriage, right? Yeah. And um, well, how much was you sort of mixing with other people that had gifts like you or were, um, you know, in the spiritual sort of work as well? I mean, was that sort of more that was pulling towards you? Was it that those kind of people? Um, no, uh, we were usually in remote areas. My uh, ex-husband and I were land... Uh, gee, my voice cracked on that one. We were land developers, and there's a bit, bit of guilt about that, <laughs> you know, about uh, knocking down when, it, you know, we didn't knock down trees. Uh, I actually, that was one of the big arguments we had was about one single tree up in the northern community because trees were so hard to grow up there. And so I made him move a road around a tree, and uh, it cost us a fortune, but we saved that tree. But there was guilt about, you know, just even the land because you realize the the microorganisms and the the universe that is literally underneath us that we are so unaware of and uh, when you disturb as a builder it can be tough so no we um, we were in remote areas there would be the odd person that would come uh, that was um, spiritually based but majority were just starting to open up and I found that I was always in a position of um, bringing information bringing you know um you know, the insights and teaching meditation and teaching the five lessons of life. So, so I think, you know, creator put me in a position of being the land developer or being the home builder because we were constantly moving. And with that constant moving, we were always with new people and we were always, you know, my former husband would be back there at the shop and building and doing his thing. And I would be having meditation workshops and gathering people in the community and, you know, and uh, doing the spiritual own stuff. And, <laughs> and it was. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Yeah. So. That is that is great. Well, I mean, obviously, your book is you know the five lessons of life. Now, your book is linked in the description below to uh, Amazon, and is obviously available from all good bookstores as well. So, uh, let's just briefly touch on the lessons. And th so, these lessons were 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 they were they given to you? Were you were, were you yeah. did they channel or was it sort of they were okay? Just describe that process and tell us how when that happened and and what the lessons were. So when uh, during my second death. I was with the Council of Men, and I was shown the five lessons. You know, the um, what actually 
just as I was about to leave heaven and come back to earth, um, creator asked me if, if I was to ask any question, what would it be? Right. And I didn't know what question to ask. And all of a sudden it came to me. It was actually a, a white light came zipping around and it went right behind my ear and into the center of my brain. And it lit up like a beautiful idea. And I knew what to ask him. And I said, okay, I understand that God loves everyone, the rapists, the murderers, the you know, people that do the most heinous things. How can that be? How can you love people that do such evil things? And he goes, ah, that's easy, like this. And he was always doing this, you know, he was always like this. And so immediately, as soon as he did that, we were in another uh, memory and I was floating in the memory of just before I came here. And it was a, a counselor with my memory self just before I came. And we were deciding what it was that um, uh, it would be good for me to learn from. So this was again 27 years ago before we had heard of any concepts of that you sit with a counselor before you come here and you decide on the, the main lessons that you're going to learn, you know. And so that was really um you know, interesting as as we progressed. So, at any rate, there I was um, learning. You know, or um, witnessing. You know, this experience and and uh, I can't remember your question. <laughs> I've gone. <sighs> that's okay. That's okay. Let, let me ask you. I, I can ask you that again. It's, it's no problem whatsoever. Sure. Uh, just carry on from there. You and it's it's about the five lessons right. uh, that the the. <laughs> council of men taught you okay. yes so yeah i uh was with the the counselor and uh, just before i was coming back and the counselor actually stepped out of the memory of um teaching me you know what lessons would be beneficial for me to learn and she stepped out of that memory and she explained the five lessons and that is you know um i don't know if i really want to go into all details right now i'll give it all away Okay, so your book is called The Five Lessons. Now, we don't want to go too deep into what those lessons are because we just, you know, we're, it's only 51 minutes we have for the show. And I know we've just got to, you know, just touch on threads of them in a sense. So let me, let me sort of set it like this. So you're with the, the Council of Men, okay? And you, because I've obviously read bits of the book, you, you know, there was um, a moment where that you was asked, you know, do you want to ask any questions? And what mm -hmm. popped in your head is the question that you're about to repeat now. And yeah. then I'll let you just <laughs> go there. So the question was, I understand that God loves everyone. And how can that be? How can you love the rapists, the murderers, the people that do the most heinous things on this planet? I just don't understand that. And he goes, and creator said, oh, that's easy, like this. And he waved his hand. And immediately I was in uh, a memory. It was in another room of the white void. And uh, in front of me was a counselor and myself. And I realized that this was the moment just before I came to earth where I was discussing with a counselor, you know, all the lessons that I wanted to learn when I came here. And one of the lessons that we had discussed, uh, that they were discussing was about when I was molested at the age of three. And I objected. I was like, how can my memory self be cheering and going, hooray, I'm going to be molested? Because that didn't make any sense to me. And so the counselor stepped away and basically said, it is because she remembers what you have forgotten. She remembers the five lessons. And when you uh, go to earth, everything that you experience is geared for you to apply these five lessons in order to grow spiritually. And so I came to understand that, you know, everything that we go through, good and not so good, but I think that everything is good in the end. But it all is about, um, you know, the five lessons and, and being able to apply them. Right, right, right. So, so, um, how could we touch upon that in a sense? Just what, what, what the basic? Because it, it, if I was to say, okay, what basically is some of the threads for those five lessons? Mm -hmm. Is there single words that we could use for those? Yes, absolutely. I, well, the first one I think is forgiveness, right? And a lot of people have a hard time forgiving because they want to hold the 
other person accountable. And they think that if they forgive, then they are letting the other person off the hook. And, uh, and yeah, uh, really, forgiveness is more for yourself than anyone else. Because when you forgive, you open up your heart chakra and you allow everything else to flow. I believe that forgiveness is uh, it's an opportunity for you to learn from hmm, learn from the lessons rather than the story. You're focusing on the lessons rather than the story. And really, that's what it's all about, right? Um, when you when you focus on your lessons, then you are open and you set yourself free spiritually. That's beautiful. Okay, so that's one. I mean, that's such an important one, isn't it? In the sense mm -hmm. that, uh, and, and that goes for ourselves, forgiving <laughs> ourselves as well. Oh, very much. Well, that's the whole thing about the five lessons is everything that we speak about and applying to others, you also have to apply to yourself. So you ask yourself questions like, uh, for instance, just recently, I, I made up with a, a girlfriend and, and I wasn't practicing the five lessons of life with her. And so I decided that, okay, this was an outstanding relationship. I need to do this. And I wrote her a really lovely letter. I, I was asking, do I love her unconditionally? Absolutely. Do I, you know, forgive her? And do I have compassion? Do I have faith and trust that we're on the right path? Uh, do I have gratitude for her? And the answers were yes. When I asked myself, do I unconditionally love myself? Yeah. Do I forgive myself? Yeah. <laughs> right? And so I had to go through the list of the five lessons and start to work on myself. And in doing so, again, all the healing took place. And, uh, and that is the same with all of the clients that I've worked with as well, you know, to watch the miracles that happen in people's lives, because um, you start applying these and, and doors open, miracles happen. It's incredible. Yes, they do. No, it, it, it is. Uh, thank you for that. So forgiveness and, and what's another few as well? Because well, obviously there's five. Yeah, but... forgiveness and compassion walk hand in hand, right? Because compassion, you, you need to have compassion to have empathy and you need to have empathy to open your heart and you need to open your heart in order to have forgiveness so you start with compassion and you end with the forgiveness and it becomes a full cycle a full circle so they actually walk in hand in hand um yeah uh faith and trust you know i i, I always Faith and trust are an interesting one because trust is a touchy feely subject you know broken trust gosh that would be a very difficult one for most people, I think. But it's becoming easier and easier the more that people practice things like the five lessons of life or meditation or, you know, um, different practices. So uh, trust, if, if trust has been broken for you, you really need to get this book. You know, not that I want to flog a book, <laughs> but I do want to share this message. And, and because, you know, it's, it's imperative in order for you to move forward trust is probably one of the biggest things that uh, that you know you need to master and you need to also let go of and uh, yeah because trust and faith um yeah they they are essential for you to grow spiritually and if you are not practicing those two then you're staying stagnant and you're, okay. you're going to pass uh, away, right? Yeah, abso absolutely. And what are some of the other the other lessons in there as well? So we've got uh, we've got uh, forgiveness, we've got trust. Yeah, um, there's forgiveness, compassion, other... faith, and trust, and unconditional love, which goes hand in hand with gratitude. So unconditional love, I think, is you know when I was writing the book, I hadn't actually you know, thought about the five lessons in their entirety. Uh, the lessons were given to me up in the white void, which most would know as heaven. But, um, you know, it, it wasn't until I actually sat down and started to write the book that it all started to come through. And it took me many years to write the book because a lot of it was channeled and I had to actually experience it myself 
and walk the talk myself to be able to get to the point that I could actually release a book, right? It, 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 yeah. So at any rate, um, uh, Unconditional Love, when I started to write that, I heard very clearly, we saved the best for the last. Because with Unconditional Love, everything is possible, right? Absolutely. I mean, what did you think when obviously... You probably wasn't thinking much, but I mean, when you, those lessons were given to you, yeah. did you sort of reject reject those that information from the no. the, the council of men? No, no. you know, uh, I felt so honoured to be in their presence and to be brought to them and to be told all of these insights. You know, coming back now, I didn't realise at the time, how profound that experience was until I started looking into other people's near-death experiences. And, you know, some people would just have a little, like a feeling that they were in the light, or some would actually feel the light, and they would get a quick message to come back. Um, some were in the dark abyss for a period of time, and and I can explain all of that, and in fact, I did. Um, there's a, a book out right now that is a you know New York best-selling uh, book on a near-death experience, and uh, it was a physician that went into the dark abyss for a long period of time, and uh, I saw that the gray zone, like there was the the white void, the black void, and the gray void. And that was the gray void for for me. Um, I you know I can explain all of that in the book and and everything that was in there you know at that time you go back to 1993 right we didn't know about um, well near death experiences you know a few people were talking about those but we certainly didn't know about quantum physics or nanotechnology or you know um, parallel dimensions or multiple universes um, we didn't have the concept that we could be in one place and another place simultaneously you know which quantum physics now proves is possible right and uh, and yeah so it's been a journey and it's also been a lesson because everything that I experienced there when I came back I kind of went back into normal mode for a long time because I had always had a gift of sight. You know, I had always heard, um, you know, that inner voice, but it was amplified and it was with a mission and it was, you know, very driven as to what I needed to do and where I needed to go. I worked with Tony Robbins. I was his business partner for many years, um, you know, and so I became a master practitioner in NLP uh, and and that combined with you know, all of the, the spiritual background, gosh, you know, I've, I've worked with over 10,000 clients now, one-to-one, -one, and, and and I have had a lot of people come to me with suicidal thoughts. In fact, one of our, one of my clients, he was a military personnel, he was in um, uh, intelligence services, high, high ranking, one of the highest ranking that you can get in the military, and so he was um, pretty pretty, uh, you know, on, on the edge of suicide. And uh, he came to me as a last resort. He had been through everything, all the, you know, all the different avenues that you can go into uh, for PTSD. So I was the last resort. And, and, you know, after a 45 minute session, he was a different man. And I remember him leaving the door and he gave me a kiss on my cheek. And as he was leaving, he said, I need to let you know, that I promised myself that if this didn't work, I was going to go home and blow my head off, and uh, and I, I was I was dumbfounded, and I said, so did it work? And he goes, oh yeah, yeah, it really worked, and he left, and it's just it's beautiful, you know, yeah, right. That's a really amazing story. That is such an amazing story. Um, I have yeah, thousands I mean, of them. I have thousands, literally. I wish I could do a TV show on what I see because the miracles, the the transformations, and it's 45 minutes. I, I don't do repeat customers because there's no need for re repeat clients, right? Right. Now, now, when you give these sessions, are they, is it something that can be done over oh. Skype or has it got to be one-to-one? -one? Oh, no, no. It energy. can't be over video. We're all energetic beings. This is all energy. 
In fact, one of my clients, uh, you know, I'll go back a little bit if we've got time. When my youngest was um, 10 years old, or my oldest, she was um, diagnosed as clinically depressed. And so I thought, oh, gosh, the psychiatric pediatrician wanted to medicate her. And it was during our divorce. She was having a really hard time with our divorce. So I heard very clearly she's an empath. And I was like, what is an empath? This is 2006, right? And uh, and uh, long story short, I heard what an empath was, how to treat an empath, and simply ask her, is this your depression or someone else's? So I turned to her and I said, Nick, is this your depression or someone else's? She looked down, she was thinking, she goes, oh my God, mom, it's not mine at all. It's yours, it's dad's, it's my sister's, it's everyone else around me. It's not mine at all. That that realization set her free. And another exercise that you know I teach in releasing. And uh, yeah, it, it it's powerful stuff, and it's all you know downloaded. Hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're downloading it in the moment. So so I mean, you are do. I guess that's something, isn't it? But it's kind of conscious channeling, very uh, much. where you're. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, can clients get to speak to your, your the channeling that you do as well? Is that something that... Uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. Lucasar will just step in and my voice changed slightly. I move a bit slower. Eyes will shift. My eyes change. And, uh, and you know he's there. And the words are so wise. I mean, it's, it's far better and, uh, and more profound than I've ever been. <laughs> Oh, you know? I, I, I can't. Yeah, no, I can't wait to come and speak to you, you and Alcazar. Uh, that will be very interesting. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, well, it's that greater part of you coming through, isn't it? When you got Alcazar coming through, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I mean, yeah. I, I, I've said this on my show many times, you know, I, I see channeling like a funnel, you know, we can channel our higher self, uh, but it's like a funnel, you know, when, when you open that funnel at the very base of it, you allow that greater part of yourself to come through. Absolutely. So, and that's, yeah. 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 Well, I, when I first started to channel, I would actually step back and Alcazar would come right in oh, and I could okay. feel myself behind here. Now it's more of an integration. He can actually come in and I'll still be here. Um, I don't always remember what he says, but, uh, but, you know. What is your connection with Alcazar then in a past life or, or this no, incarnation? No. Uh, you know what? Actually, it probably is last past life, but I've never really looked into that. Um, so in 1993, at the same time, just um, before my, or was it after, my second death, um, uh, Pragit, who is part of the Stargate, he, he channeled the building of the Stargate. 1993, he showed up in my backyard, and it was a workshop space. You know, what are the odds, right? And that uh, I had an angel come to me saying, you've got to get home, you've got to get home. I went home, Pergeet's there with this structure. Eleven people came from around the planet, from Greece, from Italy, from the United States, all over. And we were um, meditating around this structure. Well, uh, Pergeet was channeling Alcazar. I had never heard of Alcazar, you know, nothing. So Pergeet had to leave, and, uh, you know, we, we meditated for uh, four days, I think it was, three days, four days, and he had to leave. He had to go back to the States or something. So he left the Stargate structure with me for 22 days. So I slept beside this structure. I meditated beside it. It was, it was a gateway. It was a vortex, and it was beautiful. And, uh, and through it, Alcazar also stayed and he just would start to talk to me and we would have conversations. And then, um, it wasn't until I moved to Alberta, um, and started to do freedom masters. He channeled freedom masters, uh, into me. I knew that I had to start workshops doing the five lessons. And, uh, and so I gathered 12 people in a room for a weekend and I knew three exercises we were going to do, and I knew that we were going to end by six o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. And uh, so we began. And my uh, ex at the time was going, do you know what we're going to be doing? I said, no, I don't have a clue. Don't have a clue. 
<laughs> you know, but I know it's going to be great. And so we began and I, he made notes. Thank God he made notes. And that was the basis of the Freedom Masters. That was our workshop. And we ended at like two minutes to six on the Sunday. And it was all Alcazar guiding that workshop. And I, I believe, you know, on my heart that it was the best workshop that I've ever witnessed. <laughs> I bet it was. I bet. And obviously, the other chap is still uh, channeling Alcazar, and uh, does, he, he oh, must yeah. know that you're that you're also yes. channeling Alcazar. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yes. yes, yes. Alcazar comes to many now, actually. Um, especially, Pergeet now does workshops out of Mount Shasta, and uh, and you know Alcazar visits uh, and and is channeled through Pergeet and and his partner mm -hmm. Jules. But many people within the group now are also connecting with Alcazar. Alcazar is very similar to Abraham Hicks, right? Um, many, many people, the Interplanetary Galactic Council speak through Alcazar and speak. Well, you know, you know here's a funny thing. You always said to me, I always remember you saying to me, oh, you know, we're going to meet up. You know, you're going to be, I'm going to be, you know, you'll, you'll film with me one day in person. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm. I just know we are. Do you know that that's really weird? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We're going to do a whole documentary and, um, and I can feel it. It's, it's, it's big. Some of the stuff that's coming through, you know, when I think back, um, I, I've had experiences since there was little, like I said, and there's, there's a temptation to go into, you know, that, um, like a military conspiracy and stuff like that. And no, this is all spirit driven given. This is really light energy. And, uh, and I see the other side, I'm aware of, you know, harp and MIB and, you know, the shadows and, you know, shadow people and all that stuff. And I've experienced a lot of that, but, um, I like to focus on the light. I like to focus on, yeah. And I, the message has to be more positive, you know, especially ETs and all that sort of stuff, you know, because one of the things that I learned when I was up there was that we could have chosen anywhere to go. Earth was just one of many places. And and so it was confirmation that, yes, of course, there are ETs. There are many different dimensions that you could have chosen and and could have gone to. Right. And so, you you know, you. Um, you make a decision, you come here to Earth, and, and I think this is the place where you can have the most um, magnificent level of growth. Absolutely. And I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've said there. And I know we've got a time constraint right now. Um, now and I will just say that, uh, obviously, this book, your book, The Five Lessons, mm -hmm. it's in a very easy-to-read format. You know, it's not too big. I know you did that on purpose. It's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 and it's an easy carry, but it's got some bloody powerful stuff in there. And it even covers, you know, Law of Attraction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry, go it ahead. No, no, yeah. sorry. So it, it just covers so much Law of Attraction. Um, Oh gosh, you know, from 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 explanations of how the soul works to you know you know the 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 current and state and suicide. suicide you, well. you mentioned that That's as well. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, because suicide really is such a uh, you know an epidemic proportions right now, and and we need to start talking about this. And what I experienced there, you could never ever think of suicide again if you knew the truth about it. And the truth is in that book. Uh, so we're actually creating, yeah, we're creating an online, um, uh, you know, uh, course right now for the five lessons that should be up and running, I would say in the next couple of weeks. So if you can keep going back to my website, it should be listed there very soon. The five lessons of life, uh, online workshop. Okay. okay. Well, again, your website's been coming up on the screen throughout this interview. And yeah. just for those uh, listening to the podcast, uh, the website is uh kerrycohan.com okay now kerry what oh, would you say sorry go ahead <laughs> no 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 let me just ask you that again i'll just ask you that again i'll just ask you that again yeah. two seconds here we go here we go we go and obviously we've got a podcast as well so i'll just get you to repeat your website your website is uh kerrycohan.com wonderful okay and again we've been linking that on the screen throughout this interview um and just before we go as well, what would you say, what would you say right now is the most important message you could give to this audience? Mm, uh, 
you know, so many people want direction and balance in their life. And it all starts with self. It starts with a desire. And, uh, and I would, you know, look at this because this is like the owner's manual for your mind, body, spirit, and soul. And when you you master the five lessons of life, you will truly have a free life, a, a free essence about you, and uh, and you'll master your freedom. So uh, I invite people to look at the book, to, to go get it, to share it, grassroots level. You know, I don't have an agent, and I don't have a publisher. It's self-published. It's all the way around the world now. It's on Amazon worldwide. It's an international bestseller, and there's no accidents in this. You know, I'm just a messenger. When you were saying God, or when you were saying, wow, you set the book up this way, I didn't set the book up that way. It took me eight years of listening, and finally I got it right, <laughs> you know, and now it's a door, right? I've provided it, and, and go and get it. Well, you know, I, I really appreciate what you're doing. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, this interview. I think, um, I think you know, the, the mixture of, of what you've been through from near death to channeling to everything else that you're doing, I think, and, and, and the workshops as well, I think you offer people some real, um, some real uh, grounding in, in anything that uh, situation that they're going through right now. And that's, that's really helpful. And, and everyone that's watching this, of course, don't forget, obviously, you know, you can be contacted directly through your website as well. So I would yep. just like to say, uh, uh, Kerry Cahan, just thank you so so much it's not goodbye but it's i will see you at some point absolutely soon. yes i look forward to it kevin and thanks so much for inviting me and if anyone wants to just email me it's support at com. so thank you again kevin appreciate you allowing me to share the message <laughs>